We've actually got a really long list to work through, so touch wood. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lorella and I live in Missouri in the USA. Hi, I'm Liz. I'm at By the Farm in Wales, UK. And through our friendship, there have been times where we've been chatting and we've had to say, oh wait, is that the, is that the word you use or what did you just say? <laughs> and so we thought it would be fun to sit down and just talk about some of the differences in the language, even though we're both speaking English. The loo. The bathroom. The toilets. The bathroom. The lavatory. The restroom. And occasionally, the cloakroom. <laughs> so that if, makes you're in, sense. if you're in a restaurant or you're in a theatre, you ask to go to the cloakroom. So if you were in America and you asked to go to the cloakroom, they would send you to the coat check girl, which is where, I don't know if they still do it, but um, they would have somebody whose job was to collect your coats mm -hmm. upon arrival, hang them up, or a gentleman's hat and put it in a number and you would get a number and then you could yeah. retrieve it at the end so of the I show. So I suspect it was all part and parcel of the same thing because in the very old days there would be somebody attending the public cloakrooms, toilets, so making sure they were clean and that there were fresh towels and, and soap and everything, you know. So I suspect it was the same person who looked after your coats. So historically it would have been the cloakrooms. And then you would let them know that you needed to... Yeah. Front yard. Garden. Backyard. Garden. But a yard is a hard standing area, usually outside, either outside a small Victorian house, would have just had like a small yard at the back, that's a, a, like a concreted area. Patio. No, patios are usually nice places, whereas a yard is usually like a utility space. So it might just be where you keep your uh, rubbish bins. Okay, so that... I left you we don't, space we don't have, I was still trying to think of what word we would call that space. So if you go to a business that um, has masses of wood or machinery all around the outside of it and some vehicles and everything, what's that area called? The yard. Well, that's what I'm going to say. We call that the yard. We call that yard because it's hard standing rather than being grass. Right. So that's what I'm trying to get across. And, this. And if I walked into a business and said, you know, I, I was told to speak to someone, so, oh, he's out on the yard, I would expect what you just described. It's a hard standing. But yeah. if I called my friend and she said, hang on, I'm going to send my kids out into the yard so that they're yeah. not being noisy, yeah. then they she meets a grassy area where they can play. Okay, so, and ours would say out to the garden. Yeah. And your garden is more, much more specific. It has it? a purpose for growing fruits and or vegetables and or flowers. And, and sometimes... Uh, we might specify they've got a lovely flower garden. But in general, if we just say garden, somebody's, or are you a gardener, we're going to expect them to grow vegetables. Sidewalk? Pavement. The pavement is what the car drives on. The pavement drives on the road. The pavement drives on the road? No, it's <laughs> God. I'm so pleased that she spotted that one and didn't just let that go, because that would have been... <laughs> been a really long day already. <laughs> no, the pavement is what the road is made out of. It's the material, like asphalt. No, that's, that's tarmac. If you're over here uh, from my channel, uh, By The Farm, please remember to uh, subscribe to Lorella's channel. Remember to hit the like button. Please leave a comment if you think of any other words that we say differently to America. And join uh, my friendship with Lorella. A townhouse. It's a terraced house, unless... It's a really tall one, a three-story one, in which case it is a townhouse. Most of our townhouses, I think, are two stories. A duplex. A semi-detached. A fourplex. A quarter house. Um, a porch. Do you, do you want me to describe it? Because I think <clears throat> you have the word porch. Yeah, we do. So to us, a porch would be outside of a door, a place to stand, and typically not made out of wood because if it's made out of wood it's called a deck and it would often have some kind of overhang or awning or covering so it's it's on the front of the house where you might have some chairs but you might not but it's typically bigger not just like the stoop is just the area immediately the size of the door okay so what you call a stoop we call a porch <laughs> and what you call a porch we might call a veranda but basically we don't have, not many houses have that deck 
porch verandery type thing to sit out in the rain. When I think of veranda <laughs> in the rain. <laughs> That makes sense because uh, you have a lot of rain here. I, when I think of Randa, I think of really long with a swing and, and southern and big flowers and fancy. I think of a veranda usually as being on the first floor. So not on the ground floor, oh, but on the next floor up yes. that you would look out on. I a bit like when the Queen and the, right. the fam royal family go out onto the veranda and to wave at people. So it's a... Let's, it's let's a, do it, ready? Make, you gotta move your wrist really small because you don't realize I gotta do that for hours. You can't be doing this, you wear yourself out. <laughs> so we've actually spent all week correcting each other, teasing me. It's been, <laughs> it has been good humoured. Yes. Mostly. <laughs> Until she gets nasty. <laughs> I would never. Okay, so that's a tap. It's a faucet. No, it's a tap. It's a faucet. And this is typical of the United States. Even if it has two handles, it comes out one. So I've been, it's been interesting to me being here because um, in more than one place that I've been, the hot water and the cold water come out separately. So washing your hands is really fun because it's like, burn my hands, freeze my hands, burn my hands, freeze my hands. <laughs> Cup it together. <laughs> so I think the idea, I've got to say, I don't think many people do it, is that you put the plug into the bottom of the sink and you run some each of the water the water into the sink and then wash your hands in that. But I think we've just got very used to using running water for things rather than collecting the water. So yes. I do hot cold, hot cold, <laughs> burn freezer, burn freeze as well. <laughs> this is similar, but this is where the water comes from outside. Yeah, the sky. <laughs> <laughs> so no it's, it also comes from a tap outside. It's a spigot. A spigot. French fries. Are chips? No, chips are crunchy and... A crisps. Sherbet. Sorbet. Arugula. Oh, this one's rocket. I don't like rocket. I really don't like the taste of it. It's quite bitter, isn't it? Yeah. Cilantro. Coriander. This is zucchini. It's called a courgette here, and a zucchini is actually one of the varieties that you can grow. The other thing is that in the UK, if you let your zucchini courgette grow too large yes. it's then referred to as a marrow oh we refer to that as nasty yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's just <laughs> overgrown zucchinis i think we don't have a separate word for them <laughs> but you can do really good things with them so what i have done with them slice them in half lengthwise yeah. scoop out the stuff turn it upside down put it in the oven and let it cook till it's nice and soft and then use it as like a spaghetti boat or a meat oh, sauce okay. boat and then it's where it's pretty good that way. We really enjoy that. They're also really good for just like holding cardboard down in the <laughs> garden. If you're making a, doing a cardboard mulch, That's just put a few of those, <laughs> hold them down and just use them as a weight in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember that later next year. And the, the interesting thing about zucchinis, or the funny thing, they're like hide and seek masters. Oh, so you can check yes. them every day and they're like this big, this big this big I don't even know if you can see my finger moving this big and then you go back the next day and they're this big Wait. <laughs> I have looked for you every day how did I not see a zucchini this big growing in the garden falling over it and you still haven't seen it <laughs> uh, and this is something that I've started growing in the last five years and I'm growing uh, aubergines but I'm growing very long thin almost like a finger version rather than the much round uh, eggplants we have no idea why they're called eggplants. No, they don't look like eggs at all. A camper. A caravan. Oh, it's also called a trailer, a camper trailer, interchangeably. Okay. An RV. Is a camper van. A flat. A puncture. And just as a reminder, in the UK, uh, we drive on the correct side of the road. We drive on the right side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> these big vehicles that are traveling um, and sometimes they have one part that is a container and one part that is the vehicle and they can detach what okay. we call one of those. So those are a lorry and sometimes uh, if, they, if they've got more than one carriage behind them they're called articulated lorries. Wow. Okay, so we have a lot of words for these. We have tractor trailer. And the front part is a tractor and the back is a trailer. Okay, tractor is what you get on a farm. You never get a tractor unless it's a farm vehicle. Don't know why it's called tractor trailer, but it is. It's also called a big rig. 
an 18 wheeler, um, a truck. So the person driving is a truck driver. And so do you have lorry drivers? We have lorry drivers. All right. yeah. And if we have, we have lorry drivers on occasion and we now have truckers because I think the word has come. And those trucks are also called semis. Semi. <laughs> and if they're pulling more than one, it's a tandem. That makes sense, doesn't it? Oh, we've done a lot of using uh, a motorway in the last few days, haven't we? We have. We've been over a lot of area. Uh, and I guess our word is particular to our country because we have states. We, we drive on interstates. And the bit down the middle uh, is called a central reservation. The here. median. What are you reserving? <laughs> I don't know what it just is. It's called the Central Reservation. So what do you call it if you have, it, it's smaller than a motorway, but it might have one or two lanes going in either direction with a divider in the middle? We call that a dual carriageway. Divided highway. And one of the other things that you were talking about yesterday when we were traveling was how different the, the outlook is when you're sitting in a car and you're, and you're looking across the road. Yes, they have hedges on either side of the road Unless pretty much you're in a village or town, in which case there will be buildings on either side of the road. But the hedges are probably, what, 15 feet tall? Well, the hedges probably aren't that tall, but they're, they're very often they're on a, a bank of, of earth. So if you imagine that the ground is flat and then they've carved uh, the road out, so it's a bit like with a snow plan yeah. pushing them. So that then makes it mound up and then the hedges are on top of that. Oh, So it makes okay. them feel... Yes. A lot higher. So, and when you're seated in a car or a pickup, you can't see over them. So you don't see the house as much. But there are places where there's gaps and you can see the rolling hills and the sheep. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. Yes. Just as you would imagine Wales to be. Yeah. And when you get into uh, more built up areas, those those hedgerows aren't there. They've, they've disappeared and you've mm -hmm. got... And it's much more uh, like the suburbs of any time. Sure. So you get, you get those quite long gardens at the front of a house before you get to the house so it does open up a bit and then once you get into towns and that's one of the other things to mention is that our our towns are not laid out in a grid pattern so you, they're more confusing and there's lots of curves and there's lots of yeah. one-way streets and there's lots of no logic at all so in the u.s a lot of that will depend on how old the city is and how much city planning was done early on so when you go on the east coast then, of course, you have a lot more narrow streets, winding roads, less grid-like patterns. But pretty early on in American history, they started laying out grid lines. Yeah. Like Washington, D.C. is very much, and they have quarters. Yeah. Hey, look, there's some guys playing football there. Soccer. So we have, uh, we have football and rugby, and you have soccer and... Um, football, football yeah. which over here they would call American football, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, either way you go, it's a lot of people running around. Yeah, it's a lot of guys chasing the, the ball. From my point of view, give them all a ball, save the time. <laughs> Why are they fighting over it? <laughs> <laughs> They're not that expensive, really. We can buy one for each of you. So these are shoes that we would wear to gym class, and there's a variety of them and we call them trainers sneakers we also call them plimsolls daps tennis shoes yeah tennis shoes would only be worn for tennis i love the name sneakers though because to me that means that every other shoe that was made before that one must have been very loud <laughs> so these can be like sneaking around i just i get an image of all the kids on the mystery van and scooby doo <laughs> Okay, this one is a fun one. This is my friend nathan and his wife tara and look at what he is wearing around his waist Oh, yes, a bum bag. A fanny pack. <laughs> In the US, your fanny is the same as your bottom. It's a part of your body you sit on. Whereas in the UK, it's a female's private parts and not a nice word for it. No. So this item. So it has a thin spaghetti strap at the top uh, and sleeveless. We call it a vest. Cammy. A vest has no arms so it's sleeveless but it must have wide shoulders and it must have an opening in the front so you can zip it or button it and and it can be either um well like my aunt made christmas vests that 
were to wear like over a t-shirt right and it had buttons and it had a christmas pattern on it or it could be like a puffy jacket with no sleeves that you zip up okay so the the wide one that's a v-neck and or usually a v-neck yes uh, and buttons on the front that you would wear say under a jacket it's going to be a waistcoat okay if it's that puffy thing that goes over the top it's a gilet which is g-i-l-e-t so it's another french word gilet so okay so it's a puffy vest all right and then another one is um this what you're wearing right here it's a sweater it's a jumper it's a sweater because it makes you sweat what an appealing <laughs> name for an item <laughs> clothing and i think they were first used and maybe the same reason for people who were exercising so like jump rope and so they would sweat off their... yeah maybe i mean we i've kind of assumed it's because if we want to do that fabulous children's joke it doesn't work with sweater <laughs> tell the joke so what you get if you cross a kangaroo and a sheep a woody jumper <laughs> it's, no it's not funny it's funny if you're five <laughs> it's, it's funny to me but i like five-year-old jokes pants trousers underwear pants bathrobe dress and gown zipper zip no zip is the action zip your pants zip your jacket yeah you use the you zipper zip. no you zip your zip This is fun because it's it's gonna be words that have where the name brand has become the thing, but not in both countries. Yeah. So we've actually got a really long list of names. So um, touch wood that we can actually get through them all. Did you just say touch wood? Yes, touch wood. We not on wood. So we've actually got a really long list of names. So um, touch wood that we can actually get through them all. Okay. There we go. Do that again. Oh gosh. Do I that thought you were again? just doing it, yeah. Yeah. We've actually got a, a really long list to get through, so hopefully we can work. <laughs> We've actually got a really long list to work through, so touch wood. <laughs> two minutes because because <laughs> you're being naughty it's going to be words that have where the name brand has become the thing but not in both countries yeah uh we go for the floor we vacuum the floor um i have a scratch would you get me a band-aid no i can get you a plaster bandage we might say bandage oh okay. we wouldn't say plaster ever so, well, the other thing is that plaster is that stuff that you put on, you get put on your arm by the doctor. If you have a cast. If you have a, a broken... Yes, so, yeah, that's, so that's a cast. That's a plaster. And when you blow your nose, we use a Kleenex. Oh, we use a tissue. There's what? another type of tissue, isn't there? Not just for nose blowing. Yes, there's toilet paper. Which is new roll. Or tissue. Toilet tissue. All right, the first one is a craft that my mother did in the 1970s and she would braid and twist strings together and it's called macrame macrame no macrame macrame <laughs> glacier yeah it, it's the same word but it's said glacier so we, could, we use it i think you might have even said it with an a ah, glacier do you say glacier or glacier so, oh probably both and the other thing is is that my english accent is very southern um so it becomes different and words are pronounced differently if you go further north just as they are in the states so we have regional differences so you don't all sound like bert and mary poppins uh, no <laughs> does anyone that was in the uk sound like bert no one because that was such an awful accent bless nick van dyke uh, but no that is so not an english accent this is a picture that i had my daughter who is studying aerospace engineering yay carter real rocket scientist in the family uh this is a picture of her math homework Okay, and we call it maths in the plural. 
All right, and then this word um, is pronounced very differently, I know, so I'll let you say it first. Water. 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 It's, I know, I can hear that it sounds like it's spelled W-O-O-D-E-R, water. Or not, not water. I guess W-O-D-D-E-R. Yeah, water. Water. And and so I want to try and say it like you say it. Water. 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 I can't even get the first syllable right. War. The, war. Say it again. War. Like when people go to war. War. Water. War. But there's no R. War. You don't say the R in war. Say war again. War. War. Ter. 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 Water. War. Ter. Did that sound even close to right? Yes. <laughs> Water. Water. I can't do it. I'm really bad at accents. I just wanted to try because I know that's Water. one I've tried to say all week long and I can't get it right. <laughs>